Hey traders, Jason here from Lever Brothers. So in this video, I'm going to talk about some stats and what they uh, predict for the rest of the year. Okay, so I'm going to look at the new highs. I'm going to look at the performance as of the end of August. Um, and just to get an idea of what the market is likely to do the rest of the year. Now, with stats, a lot of you could like poo-poo them and say, hey, you can crunch numbers however you want and you can get the numbers to say what you want. Um, it's actually not the case. There are a lot of stats that have a very high degree of predictability um, and they're worth looking at, okay? In fact, in my master class, I spend an entire section just on quant studies. Um, there's over 40 videos just talking about quant studies. Uh, for example, did you know that when, the, when January posts a gain of 5% or more, the odds that the rest of the year post a, post a very solid gain are very high? Okay, so knowing that, it doesn't necessarily help you trade day to day or week to week, but you keep that in the back of your mind. And then if there's a little bit of weakness in the spring or summer, it gives you confidence knowing that there's a 95% chance that the market is going to you know, post a gain those final 11 months. So it gives you a little bit more confidence to step in maybe with some size uh, and, and buy and make a lot of money for the rest of the year. So it's good to have some background and stats. So that's what I'm going to do in this video. Um, now, these stats are easy to crunch. Okay? Anyone can go to Yahoo, download the S&P 500 data going back many decades. They can throw it into a spreadsheet, and with a little bit of uh, Excel knowledge, it's not that hard to recreate these numbers. Um, I've done that in a lot of cases, but with these stats, um, I just took them from other people who have uh, already done it. So during the video, I cite my source. Okay? I'm not trying to st uh, you know, take credit for stuff, but they are pretty generic. Anyone could do this. Um, so enjoy. Let's get into the charts. I'm going to talk about the S&P 500 first, just really briefly, and then I'm going to get into some current state of where the market is and what the market, how it acted in uh, uh, through August as far as new highs, its performance, and what that predicts for the rest of the year. All right, let's get into it. So here is the S&P 500 monthly chart going back 15 years, just to give a quick perspective. Okay, so the the index traded within parallel trend lines for 11 years, and then off the virus low, it went basically vertical. Okay, this is not sustainable. At some point in time, we're going to get a uh, you know a reversion to the mean. Um, this could last for five, six more months. It could last into next year, but at some point in time, we're going to have a mean reversion. Like this just simply can't last. If you look, um, you know, the, the, the one time period, which is probably most analogous to this is just the low in 2009. So if you look at that being 700 and you ask, well, how long did it take to double up to 1400? You know, there's 1400. So it took, you know, early 2009 to early 2011. So even back then, when you had a 50% drop uh, during the financial crisis, it still took you know, more than two years to double. And here we're doubling in, we doubled in like uh, 16 months or so. So not predicting, not saying it's gonna happen right away, but it's gonna happen at some point. So continue trading, buy assisted alongside. You definitely wanna be long. I have no interest whatsoever in trying to pick a top, but just know that this vertical move here is not sustainable. All right, now some people can accuse me that this chart kind of messes up the data. Um, so I'm gonna, it's the line, it's not the linear, it's the arithmetic chart. So I'm gonna look at the, the log chart. Um, and it obviously it looks different. The log charts are gonna do that. So we still have almost all data points going back, you know, 10, 11, 12 years are gonna fit within parallel trend lines. And then just in the, this year, we moved outside the channel. So again, at some point in time, we're gonna get a mean reversion back to like maybe the longer term uptrend at, you know, it's gonna happen at some point. I don't know when it's gonna happen, but it's gonna happen. Uh, just keep that in the back of your mind. All right, so zooming back in, here is the current monthly chart, just going back a couple years. Uh, as you notice here, out of the last 17 months, we've been up 14 months. It's a heck of a streak. Only one time did we have back-to-back -back down months. Currently, we are on a seven-month win streak. So now let's look at some stats. What happens when we have a seven-month win streak? What are the gains right now at the end of August, and what do they predict going forward? How many new highs have we made this year, and what do they suggest going forward? All right, so let's look at some numbers here. 
All right, so here is the longest win streaks in history. And this is a data courtesy of LPL Financial. So these are the longest win streaks in history, okay, sorted based, based on the length of the streak. So 1954, we had a streak of 11 months up in a row. 1959, we also had a streak of 11 up months in a row. So you can see here, going, you know, not including this year, we have 14 different times in history we've had a win streak of seven months or more and of course you know this year we're on a seven month win streak so this is number 15. Um, note so i'm just putting this in perspective this is like you know among the top 15 win streaks going back to 1950. okay also want to note that you can see here um seven not seven but five win streaks ended at seven months okay and another five win streaks ended at eight months and then only four lasted more than eight months. So right now we are, we just did seven. Okay, so if we have a down month in September, it will join this group in the history books. If it goes, if we have an up month in September, it, the streak will grow to eight and it will join that group and still be live. Okay, but just note that, you know, of the 14 longest win streaks in history, 10 of them ended at seven or eight months. Okay, just to put things in perspective, like win streaks of longer than eight months, there's only it's only happened four times in history. Okay, so we're getting to the point where like this is this is getting historically it's right now it's still in line with what's happened in the past, but we're gonna you know within a month or two we're gonna get to rare um, rare air uh, time. All right, so now what the question is that would follow this is like well what tends to happen when you have a long win streak? Typically, strength begets strength. So when you have a long win streak like this, what happens? So let, well, let's look at all of these dates and see what has happened going forward. Okay, here they are. Okay, again, courtesy LPL Financial. Um, so what we have here is you have all you have all the win streaks um, sorted in uh, chronological order. Okay, so in, in 19, so I'll just highlight this in 1954, we had an 11 month win streak. One month later, it was the month market was up 4.9%. Three months later, the market was up 8.4%. Six months later, almost 20%. And 12 months later, it was up almost 36%. Okay, so that, that, that's what the numbers are here. So let's look at it a little bit closer. So obviously, you have a seven month win streak that ended. So the one month return is negative these two seven month win streaks ended and these two seven month win streaks ended obviously okay i'm telling you exactly what um you, you already know okay but looking out three months okay when you have a seven month win streak or longer 12 of the 14 times the market was posting a gain three months later okay not bad and six months later it's 13 out of 14 okay so when you get a long win streak of seven months or more, six months later, you have 13 out of 14 up months, or up periods, I should say, because it's a six month period, and the average is about 8%, okay? So long win streaks, even when they get disrupted, uh, still tend to do, do pretty well looking out three months, looking out six months, and looking out even 12 months, okay? So strength does tend to lead to strength even if there is a disruption after seven months, after eight months. All right, next set of numbers. All right, this is hard to read. I get that, so I'll walk you through it. Okay, again, from LPL, LPL Financial. So what we have here is now, right now, the S&P 500 is up, tw it was up 12 point, not 12, it was up 20.4% at the end of August. Okay, and the question is, how well does the market tend to do when it posts a gain of 15% at the end of August, okay? The year-to-date gains at the end of August are 15%. So the blue bars here are the gains at the end of August, and then the orange bars are the gains for the final four months of the year. So for example, in 1954, you had a 20.2% gain the first eight months of the year, and then a 20.6% gain the last four months of the year. Okay, so looking at the chart, obviously most of the time, you know, these all these blue bars are 15% or greater, and 
most of the time you get an, an orange bar, which is above zero. Most of the time you get a, a gain the final four months of the year. There was a loss in 1986 and there was a big loss in 1987. Okay, so here's the current situation. Are we gonna get a bar over here or are we gonna get a bar down here? Okay, of these 14 times, 12 of them posted a gain um, the following four months. Only twice was there a loss and only once was there a big loss and that was 87 because there was a giant crash. Okay, so gains of 15% or greater at the end of August does tend to lead to more gains the rest of the year. Next set of numbers. All right, now the market has also posted a lot of highs this year. It seems like every day, every other day, we're posting a new all-time high. So what we have here is these are all the times in history, or I should say since 1950, um, when the market has posted at least 30 new highs through, through August, okay? So for example, in 1955, it had posted 37 all-time highs through August, and then it continued, and there were 12 more new highs for a total of 49 by the end of the year. And the the return for the for the rest of the year, um, the final four months, was 5.3 percent. Okay, so so the question is, um, and then of course we have this is uh, 2021. We have had 53 new highs, which is the most number of new highs through August in history. Um, and the question is like, well, how does this tend to lead going forward? So here we have 37 became 49, so 12 more new highs the following four months. 33 grew to 53, so 20 more new highs. 52 went up to 65, so 13 more new highs. 1987 is the lone year where there were no more new highs, as you can see. Say so whatever the last high was in August, that was it. No more new highs the rest of the year. But all these other years, 51 grew to 77, 40 to 45, 41 to 47, 32, all the way up to 53. So the question is, 53 is going to become what? Is that number right there going to be 53? Is it going to be just like 1987? Or are we going to continue to get more new highs going forward? Um, and, uh, you know, is that, that that's the question. So, like, when we tend... Obviously, when we get a lot of new highs through August, okay, again, these are the all the all the years where we've had 30 or more, um, most of the time that leads to further new highs the rest of the year and gains the rest of the year with the only year that it didn't work was 87 during the crash, okay? So however you look at, whether you look at the gain at the end of August, that leads to that tends to lead to more, you know, high gains at the end of August tend to lead to further gains. A, a large number of new highs by the end of August tends to lead to more gains. Okay, let's look at um, another one. All right, so I've painted a pretty good picture. Gains leading to more new highs, a lot of new highs leading to more new highs. Here is seasonality, and I know this is kind of small, so I'll walk you through it again from LPL Financial. Um, what we have here is... Uh, the performance of the S&P, looking back 10 years in orange, 20 years in light blue, or since 1950 in uh, in dark blue for each month. Okay, so for example, you know here's January. So in January, this orange line, this orange bar represents the average gain over the last 10 years. Um, this blue one here represents the gain or loss over the last 20 years, and then this dark blue one represents the gain or loss over the last, um, you know, since 1950. So as you can see, uh, and then of course there's like January, February, March, April, all the way to December. So as you can see, September tends to be very weak. Um, you can see here that over the last, the orange bar, is the biggest orange bar everywhere here. There's only one other orange bar. Okay, over the last 10 years, September's been the weakest month. This bar here is the biggest. Okay, there's a down here and a down here, but this is the biggest. So over the last 20 years, September's been the weakest month. And then going back to 1950, this is the only down bar over here. Okay, so whether you look back 10 years, 20 years, or since 1950, September's been the weakest month of the year. So while I just painted a rosy picture that we're likely to head higher going forward, in the near term, September historically has been a very weak month. 
All right, now let me wrap this up. Oh, one more chart, one more chart. Um, and this backs it up. This, this has less to do with uh, um, what's currently happening and more, more so the big picture. Because we've made a lot of new highs, and this number right here should be 53, okay? Um, and that's 53 through now, whereas all these other data points are the end of year number. Um, I want to make the point that new highs tend to occur in clusters, okay? So when the market hits a new high, it's not like it hits a new high and then it has to consolidate for a couple of years and then hit a new, another new high. What happens is when the market hits a new high, it tends to make oftentimes a couple dozen new highs for that year, and then it will hit a couple dozen new highs for many, many years to go. So there tends to be clusters of new highs. So for example here, here's a 15 year period where yes, there were a couple years that were off, you know, here, here, and here, but otherwise every year you're getting a couple dozen new highs, okay? Then you have a, a blank period here, and then you have a period here for 20, oops, for 20 straight years, you have new high after new high after new high, like every single year for 20 years, almost every year for 20 years, you have dozens of new highs. Then we have this void space here, and now we're back into new highs, okay? So if indeed history repeats, and I have no reason to believe that it won't, especially since these stats tend to be convincing, that the idea that when the market hits a new high, it doesn't just rest or consolidate or pull back for a couple of years and and you know get all its ducks in order and then rally again when it hits a new high it tends to keep pressing higher over and over and over okay we might only be halfway through a 15 or 20 year period where a lot of new highs are printed okay just want to bring that to everyone's attention that even though we've had a lot of new highs the tendency is to continue hitting a lot of new highs all right now let's wrap this up okay so there you go whether you look at the gain at the end of August or the number of new highs that were hit uh, through the end of August, a lot of stats point toward a continuation of um, the strength for at least the foreseeable future. Okay, Perhaps you could argue that the gains are you know, not sustainable, and I'll actually say the same thing. But for now, based on the gains, based on new highs, based on the win streak, the market is more likely to do well going forward the rest of the year than it is to be weak. Okay. Keep it in the back of your mind. We do have seasonality right in front of us, but otherwise the market, if it follows historical precedent, should do well. If you like stats, if you like using statistics and quant studies as a backdrop for your operations, they might give you a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of extra confidence to size up sometimes. It might give you a little bit of a, a warning to, you know, to be careful. Check out my master class again. I spent an entire section, over 40 videos, walking you through the, through the year from January to February to March of all types of occurrences and statistical breakdowns um, to help guide you through the year. So if you like stats, if you like it, uh, having this as a backdrop to your trading, check it out. Till next time, thanks for watching, and I'll see you.